afternoon. This is Robin Harvey. As vice chair of the committee, I now call to order the April 11th meeting of the Equity Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee members will state their name before speaking. Ms. Siebold, please call the roll of board members to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good afternoon. Ms. Siebold, prior, Ms. Siebold, prior to you starting that, I would like to remind all, all dialed in uh, board members that star six on their phone will unmute their mic. All right, um, start uh, with Dr. Savoy. I know Dr. Savoy was having audio issues. We can come back to her. Uh, Ms. Harvey. Present. Ms. Drummond. Ms. Frampong. Ms. Lichter. Present. Ms. Delusky. Present. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Zvoy, are you there? Uh, we, we know that Dr. Savoy is um, on the call. She is experiencing audio issues, but um, she is with us on the call. Thank you, Ms. Siebold. Mm -hmm. Ms. Siebold, will you now please call the role of staff members on the Equi Equity Committee participating in today's meeting? Yes, uh, Ms. Charlie Green. Present. And Mr. Handy. Present. Thank you. Great, thank you, Ms. Siebold. So the first item on the agenda is review of policy 0100. And for that, I call on Mr. Douglas Handy. Mr. Handy. All right, thank you, Ms. Harvey. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so just want to recount uh, where we are currently with the revision of policy 0100. Uh, at today's meeting, um, the goal of, of our um, time together is to review the feedback on policy 0100 that I've received from committee members. So I've compiled the feedback. Uh, and at this point, we want to review the feedback um, from committee members, make sure everyone sees um, everything has been recommended uh, from this committee before uh, we move on to next steps. So next slide, please. All right, and um, again, just to uh, review steps we've taken up to this point, um, policy 0100 was presented um, at the February 5th uh, policy review committee meeting um, of this year. Uh, during that meeting, uh, the PRC members decided that the policy would be sent to this committee, the Equity Committee, for additional review. Um, that policy was then uh, sent to this committee on February 22nd, 2024. And really since that time, uh, we've been uh, gathering feedback from committee members. So committee members were asked to provide the feedback by March 4th uh, to be reviewed at the March 14th meeting. Um, our March 14th meeting, uh, which is on record, uh, we did not have quorum of the of the committee. Um, so and because of that, we are back at today's meeting uh, to complete that review. Uh, once we have that review from this committee, uh, the policy will be uh, revised and returned to the policy review committee for review and approval. Um, and then from there, it will be sent to the full board for first reader. Next slide, please. All right, I'm um, sorry, we can go back one. Got a little ahead of myself. Thank you, Mr. Corns. All right, so at this point, um, want to go through uh, in a little detail, just to make sure all committee members have a chance to uh, ask any questions or get any clarification that may be needed on uh, revisions made to, um, to the policy at this point. So just gonna go to, um, Check my reference here. So, um, so committee members, um, you should have received documents showing uh, um, a culmination of all the recommendations that you all made. Uh, we did have um, a couple sections that uh, may need some clarity. I know there was one section that was um, submitted by 
um, Ms. Frempong. Um, since she's not here, we'll move on to um, through the document to see if there's any other sections. Let me check that may need some clarification. Um, So committee members, I'll ask if you can look at your document, if you look under uh, the section um, Roman numeral three for standards. Um, there's a section in there. Uh, Ms. Harvey, this is something that you had recommended for uh, revision to the document. Um, so committee members, it shows in your document as Roman numeral three, again, under standards. Um, and it is letter C. And I ask that you take a look at that that section to see if you have any questions about that revision to um, to the policy. Because if there's any questions, we can discuss that. And again, since Ms. Harvey had recommended that um, addition, I would ask um, you know her to just provide any comments um, based on any questions. Does anyone have any questions on that section? Is it possible to um, put it up on the screen by any chance? Um, I think we can do that. Uh, Mr. Corns, are you able to do that or would you like me to do it? Oh, there you go. He's got it. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Handy, where would you like me to scroll to, sir? Yep. If you can go to Roman numeral three. Is this the wrong one? Um, that's, yes, let's, the let's, correct let's document. The policy analysis. Yeah, let's go to the policy draft, please. Yeah, thank you, sir. Is, is, is this the one? Yes, and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure that it's actually reflected here. Um, let me see. I see, I see brackets around this. Right, it so this like, section that says standards. Yep, standards. Yes. This? Yes, but I do not see. All right, so where it says direct the use of resources to provide equitable access to educational opportunities and services, even when this means differentiating resource allocations. Uh, committee members, you should have uh, a document. Hold on just a minute. Um, in executive content, you should have a document that shows additional language for that Roman numeral and then in that letter. Um, Mr. Corns, I don't believe you have that though, uh, but committee members, you should have it in executive content. Uh, Mr. Handy, if you give me one more second, let me look at it. Does this one look better? Uh, I believe so. Thank you, sir. OK, I'm sorry. Yeah. I received three documents. Um, I was just trying to get the, the one that you needed. So you okay. need this one here? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corns. Uh, so Just let's go through a little scroll. bit. Yep. So right there, um, it starts with give each student regardless of social identifiers. So that's at the bottom of the screen for the committee members to review. Uh, Mr. Corns, if you could scroll up just a little bit so they can see the end of. There you go. So it's really that what you see at the top of your screen now. So the uh, what's there in all caps and highlighted. That's the language that's recommended to be added, and then. Um, Anything and you know, normal case, if you will, is what's in the current policy document. So, um, again, uh, Ms. Harvey, you may recall this is uh, that first section of of C in all caps and highlighted. That's the recommendation that you submitted. So, committee members, any any questions or any concerns based on this recommendation? If not, we can move on. But I just wanted to make sure we had time for discussion, if need be. This is Ms. Lichter. I, I do like that it um, gives more focus to students. So I, I appreciate the changes. Thank you, Ms. Lichter. And this is Ms. Stolesky, and we all see the word each, um, 
which I know was a recommendation. And then I'm not sure, it says regardless of social identifiers and educational needs, the requisite, I can never say that word, social, emotional, and psychological, um, might it be possible there's a word missing? And then material supports. Oh, I see what you mean. Let me check, hold on just a minute. Okay, so let me, I will take that one. Um, I'll just check it right for, I see what you're saying, Mr. Lusky. Thanks for pointing that out. I will uh, proofread that and I will get back to members um, before we move it forward. But at whatever the change, I believe, psychological, it might be materials and supports. I believe is how it should read. Um, so I think the and before materials should come out, uh, but I will confirm that. Um, just to make sure it's grammatically sound. And if that's okay with everyone, then we can move forward on that one. I, th I think we're okay. I think you're right. The and needs to come out. Yes. Okay. And let me do this. Uh, pardon me, I went a little bit out of order. Um, I went straight to some of the recommendations you all submitted, but I'm glad Mr. Lusky mentioned the each. Mr. Corns, could you go to the top of this document? I just want to make sure that as a committee, um, everyone can see uh, really just the, the changes in general. So uh, let me walk through these and I will pause in case anyone has any comments. So a couple of changes we made, and again, all changes are highlighted and also in uppercase. So um, you see that where the document or the policy used to say every student, now it says each student based on input from committee members. Um, we also removed uh, these uh, gendered pronouns um, and replace those with um, the students and keeping in alignment with uh, really our, our um, all of our policy re um, revisions with the policy revision handbook for the board. And then you'll notice also every being replaced with each. And then we did some rewording um, of letter A just to make sure, uh, make it really um, a little more um, for readability. So um, looking at A, uh, does anyone have any questions, concerns, comments on A before we move on to the next section? Um, Mr. Handy, this is um, Mrs. Harvey. I just have one uh, comment. In the last sentence, uh, for success to occur for each student in lifelong learning in the world of work, Mm -hmm. The school system prioritizes educational equity by recognizing and removing institutional barriers and ensuring that social identifiers are not uh, obstacles. Is Can we think about adding a statement to that that is uh, not the absence of, like the board is going to remove, we're recognizing, we're removing, um, we're making sure that things aren't obstacles. Is there a what are we a, a statement about what we're going to also provide? Hmm. Just for consideration. Okay, I got you. Um, okay. Ms. Harvey, it's Miss Lichter. Do you mean something about uh, to make it more positive sounding, like opportunities for? Right. So one of the things that we have to do is measure the absence of the absence of barriers, the absence of our obstacles. And if we can, if we are successful in removing those things, you know, they won't be a part of our, our schools. But there's also things that we should be doing um, to ensure um, that each student is receiving an equitable and quality education. And I know that list is a long list of things, but I wonder if there's some way we could summarize that so that we're not only committing to the absence of, but we're committing to the active work. So Ms. Harvey, if I may, uh, I believe some of what you are alluding to is later in the policy. Uh, could we go through the remainder of the document? And if those things are not delineated like you want them to be? Could we return to this section and then 
um, get some language that we can include um, in today's meeting um, so we can you know have that as part of our recommendation. But um, I guess I'm asking first, could we look to see if what you're looking for is later in the policy? I think it may be. Absolutely. Then, okay. then may I recommend we go through the policy and we can take notes on our comments because this might happen again where we're at one part <laughs> and we're providing comment and it may be uh, something that's coming later. I got you, sure, and I'm taking notes. I'll make sure we, we return to, um, yeah, uh, Great, Roman thank numeral you. one, section A. Yep, you're welcome. I'm just taking a note. All right, thank you. All right, so I'm going to the next section. Um, so again, uh, I'll let the committee members read. If you look at, again, uh, some some rewording of this section or this um you know roman um, letter b rather um i'll give you some time to read through that to see if you have any um any feedback on this recommended revision Okay. All right. So hearing none, we'll move on to the next section. All right. Again, um, section C, um, a bit of rewording here in section C. Uh, so if you can take some time, read this first section, and then I see a split across the page, and then we can scroll up to the other section, the other part of this, the same statement. Mr. Handy, this is um, Ms. Harvey. This is just a, a, a I guess, a writing the decision we need to make because in this one, in the paragraph before, we are we are going back to all, and I wonder if we should be consistent with the each. Okay, let me show them. I got you. Um, all students. So I got you, each student kind of, okay. Um, all right, let me take note of that. OK, any other uh, comments on this portion? OK, all right, Mr. Coins, can you scroll up a little bit? Thank you, sir. Um, can you go back? Oh, there you go. Thank you. All right, everyone um, ready to move to D, or if there's no comment, we can move to D. Um, I think that is D in its entirety, so we can read that on the screen as well.
OK, all right. Hearing no comments, let's move on to uh, the next section. All right, here we have a revision. So cultural responsiveness already existed uh, in the policy. There was a recommendation um, to uh, change that definition. Can you say that again, Mr. Handy? Yeah, so cultural responsiveness um, existed in the, the policy already. So if you look at uh, what's in brackets at the end with the strike through that was the that's the current definition in the policy. Uh, one of the committee members recommended the revision that you see there a revised definition and that's what you see there highlighted. OK, thank you. You're welcome. This is Mrs. Harvey. Can we uh, use another phrasing other than et cetera? Um, I know that's there to include things that aren't listed, but can we change that phrasing to an other appropriate methods or materials or resources rather than just saying et cetera? It's, that leaves a policy very open ended. OK. Um, Smith Lichter, this is not a big deal. It just feels like the phrase and get them excited is much more informal than the rest of the, the wording. So I don't know if there's a way to elevate it a little bit. To engage with students, if create they motivate. Excitement. Right. Some right. All right. Again, not a big Good. idea. It just kind of feels OK, so I'll do that. So let's I'll say let's. Um, so we'll move, get them excited and motivate them about learning. How about that? So you're keeping and get them excited? No, no, I'll remove. Oh. So it'll it'll read the ability to engage with students and motivate them about learning slash instruction. So okay. I'll remove, remove, get them excited and replace it with motiv motivate. Okay. Don't say motivate them, but you know, we'll take the excited off. Does that make sense, Ms. Lecter? Yes. Okay. All right. And I want to go back um, to Ms. Harvey. Can you give me some language? I just want to make sure I'm, like you said, I don't want there to be any um, miscommunication in what you're looking for in this policy. So can you give me the language that would you want to replace? We'll take the et cetera out. Um, I think something along the lines of appropriate artifacts, pedagogy, and other related resources. Because that kind of captures. Uh, anything that's not listed, but is germane to. Uh, learning and instruction. OK, and other related resources, got it. OK, and then uh, Mr. Corns, can we go back up? Um, because I do recall there being et cetera as part of the previous section as well. So Ms. Harvey or any other committee members, do we want to? I'm assuming we want to also remove et cetera from this statement. Uh, do we want to provide some language to replace that? But does you mean the EG? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, et well, no, the, at the end. Oh, at the end, OK. And this is et cetera is at the end of the examples. So, I, you know, you could say electronic devices. Um, in, or you could say conveyed. Including but not limited to mobile apps, artificial intelligence, social media, 
I'm I'm not sure I'm not tech savvy enough to list all the ways that you know these kinds of things can happen, but okay. But concluded but not limited to. Yeah, I like that phrase also. Okay. I'm just taking a note here. Okay. All right, I have it. Okay, thank you. All right, so Mr. Corns, if we can go back to, thank you, sir. And then if you look at the bottom and if you could scroll just a little bit. So cultural competence is actually uh, not in the current policy. A committee member recommended this as a new definition. So uh, please read that definition and uh, provide any feedback, please. So, so oh, Ms. Harvey, yes. Um, I I think there's probably some smoothing out of some of this, the the flow, but I'd also like the committee to consider adding some words um, to uh, this definition, uh, particularly that cultural competence is the ability to uh, understand respect and embrace the child as a whole person not just as a student um, and then i think that should say including um Do, do we need that first sentence? Because I mean, the child is a whole person, not as a student. They they are our students. I mean, could it be the ability and then go to understand that the child's behaviors, mannerisms, um, just I find I find it awkward to say they're not just as a student. They are our they are our students. I think you could just end it uh, to embrace a child as a whole person. OK, right. Understanding that the child's behavior. Yeah, take out not just as a student. OK, because we keep saying our sole purpose is to. Educate our students, I mean our. I also think that. Understanding is not the whole goal there is we what we do with our understanding which would be mm -hmm. to Fine. respond appropriately how okay so i heard some agreement on removing not just a student um, so we can do that. Um, could you all provide language on how you'd like the rest of it to read?
As cultural competence, the ability to embrace a child as a whole person. By understanding the child's behaviors. By respecting, maybe it's not under by under right, understanding and respecting. I think it's more than just behaviors and mannerisms. It's also beliefs. It could be attitudes, beliefs um, that differ across cultures and ensuring that we respond appropriately. <clears throat> I'm just worried when we have so many words strung together that we lose the intent of what we're trying to say. Um. Well, this is a definition, so. Yeah, I do um, tend to agree with Ms. Lichter. Um, the definition is really important. Um, but if it could be a little bit more concise, I think that would be a little more <laughs> friendly. Well, I think the, the example at the end about the, the impact statement probably should not be part of a definition. The, in, the the impact of cultural competence is reductions and suspensions of historically marginalized students. I'm not sure if the definition shouldn't end at and or upbringing. Okay. Any um, I, you know, any opposition to what Ms. Harvey just suggested? No, I agree. Um, this should just be the definition. The application of it is what the rest of the policy or rule would be. Okay. I agree as well. Now, were, were these the, the um, edits from the committee or from our committee, from policy and review or from our committee? Uh, these were from equity committee. Uh, policy review actually did not give any um, changes. Changes, oh. right? They, they just recommended it come to this committee. Oh, okay. I thought, okay. All right. So remove, we'll remove the last sentence. Um, could we go back through to get some wording for the rest of the definition? Sure. Like I did here, um, Ms. Harvey, you said add beliefs. Um, I'm sorry, I got beliefs and attitudes. Values, attitudes, beliefs, do we? I mean, isn't there a definition of cultural competence somewhere? So I just Googled it. Uh huh. And um, it is also a lengthy definition. <laughs> Um, but it, it reads, do you want me to read it? Yes. Okay. Cultural competence is the ability of an individual to understand and respect values, attitudes, beliefs, and mores that differ across cultures and to consider and respond appropriately to these differences in planning, implementing, and evaluating education and other interventions. That wasn't too long. I think I'm reading the same one. We yeah, I mean, I did now. actually shorten it a little bit because it had like health education and, but 
Well, here's a shorter, same thing, but a little bit shorter. Cultural competency is the ability of an individual to understand and respect values, attitudes, beliefs, and mores that differ across cultures and to consider and respond appropriately to these differences in planning, implementing, and oh, it's the same one and a value. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that one, that one, Mr. Handy. <laughs> so here, this one is a little bit shorter. The one you just read, Ms. Tulowski, because it sounded um, like there was agreement on that one. The one below it on my Google screen. Okay. Well, so I'll ask the committee. I mean, I don't want to. It sounds like there was agreement on the first one, but do you want to? We can. You want to hear the other one as well? It sounds like we had some agreement though on that first one that Ms. Tulowski had read. Yeah. So I, I, yes, because I, I I'm more concerned about making sure that the definition. Um, really speaks to what we're aiming for and is is a complete definition. I don't want it to be cumbersome, but I don't I don't want to sacrifice words that are important. So I I like the first one. Okay, got you. Okay, so we're gonna replace we'll replace the definition. Mr. Handy. Yes, sir. I took I took the opportunity to um, uh, find that same phrasing that Mr. Lusky had found and pasted it into the chat for board to read. Thank you. The second model is the one that has the um, the term, the more specific terms around what kind of education removed. Okay, and then the first one you put in the chat is the first one that Mr. Lusky read. Uh, it, it it just simply oh. has the term health education, Mr. Andy, instead of just simply education. Okay, so it sounds like perhaps the second one, but I'll let the committee members, if you all could. Um, provide feedback on that. Are you all okay going with the second definition that's in the chat? Yes. Okay. All right. Anyone opposed? No. Um, just one little technicality. Um, if I may, this is Ms. Daleski. Mm -hmm. Um, for stakeholders that might not know the meaning of mores should we change that wording to customs or a similar word just for purpose of comprehension what do other committee members think i i agree when i was reading it out loud and i got to mores i was like needed to pause to try to figure out how that fits. i think i think customs works Okay. All right, we'll make that change. All right, so it sounds like um, I think we're okay with that definition now. Yes, yes, I agree. Okay. All right, so next, um, disaggregated data. This is also uh, a newly recommended definition. So I'll give you all time to review and comment on that one. Any comments from the board? Um, I think it's a very clear and complete definition. Okay. Andy, I think we can move forward. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, let's move on to the next um, highlight, please. Okay, um, this is also a newly recommended 
uh, definition of intersectionality. And at the end, I provided a link. That's the definition is from Miriam Webster. Can you make it a little the screen a little bit bigger? Thank you. Do we want intersect in the definition if we're defining intersectionality? Let me see well, if I can find it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Webster put it in there. Oh, this is Webster. OK, never mind. I don't need to edit Webster. Very never mind. Yeah. Rewind. Rewind the tape. Never mind. I'll talk to Webster later about my ideas. <laughs> OK, I'm good if it's Webster. All right. So I feel like we're OK with that one. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, let me see. Mr. Corns, hold on just a minute. I just want to check. Um, I want to make sure I'm. Clear on the recommendations. Um, OK, so the other thing I wanted to point out. There was a recommendation. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. OK, um, let's move on to uh, the next section. So one recommendation was to. Change currently the policy read standards. A recommendation was made to uh, add commitments to that section title. Hmm. Any opposition to that? Can it be one or the other, or is, is, is standards has to stay? Or I don't believe it has to stay. Um, I know. I know standards appears in some of our current policies. I'm not sure if commitments does. Uh, would you would you rather be one or the other, Miss Harvey? So this is you know the committee can make a decision. I just my preference is that it's more definitive when it's what it is. Is mm -hmm. it a standard? Is it a commitment? Are we saying our commitments are our standards or that our stand? You know what I mean? So I, I would prefer one or the other, but you know, I, I will agree. refer to the you board. Know, I agree. I'm not sure. They don't feel like they are the same. Usually when you do two words like that, it means the same thing and I'm not sure. Standards and commitments mean the same. I'm in agreement as well. So which one do we like? Can we read them first and then decide whether they feel like they are a. I mean, commitment to me is a stronger. If this is our what, then this is what we're committing to for policy. OK, so I'm hearing from Ms. Lichter that commitments would be a stronger statement. Um, how about we go through um, okay. as Ms. Lichter also recommended and um, before we leave the section, we can determine what you all would like to use as a as a section header. Um, so under A. Uh, everything that's highlighted in uppercase, that's additional language that was recommended to be added. Um, so please review that and provide your feedback.
kind of that last sentence, it feels like it's two different thoughts. Like the last sentence, educational environments are enriched and that feels like it's a, I don't know. It should probably be up at the top with reflect a philosophy. Uh, so um, this is Mrs. Harvey, I'm sorry. A couple things. One, the the opening sentence, I think, should say the school system will. Not strive, we will. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reflect a philosophy that social identifiers are an asset. Uh, and if we want to keep that second sentence added to that in some way, and that educational environments are enriched and improved by the contributions, perspectives, and presence of diverse members. But it is kind of uh, awkward. It's, it's, it seems like a standalone statement at the end. Okay. Uh, so make sure I'm, because I'm understanding what I've heard. What about removing the second sentence altogether? Or do you want to move it as was maybe discussed? How about removing it altogether? I'm good with removing it altogether. But what are others thinking? This is Ms. Dulesky. I'm OK with removing the last sentence. OK. And I also agree with Ms. Harvey to eliminate the word strive in the opening. Mm -hmm. And then just one other thought. Um, I'm not sure the beginning reflect a philosophy. Um, is that phrase too soft? Do we need to use a verb that's more measurable? Um, if it's a standard or commitment to show that we are accomplishing rather than just reflecting, but that's just a thought that I had. I mean, so to that point, is that we will support, understand and appreciate, I mean, do we go right into the highlighted part? Do we need the? Right. That's a good point. Or good, good verbiage and appreciate. Then you go culture, associate, right? Appreciate culture, socioeconomic, and right, all of those identifiers and that contribute to the success of our society. So that seems like a qualifier to me. If we say support and under, understand and appreciate culture, socioeconomic status, language, ethnicity, ability, and other differences mm -hmm. that contribute to, I think that lends itself to there are some that do and there are some that don't. And we're supporting and understanding the ones that do. <laughs> I'm not sure about how to reword that, but I do agree with other members that we can just go right into the school system will. And okay. And I think in one of the other ones, we changed understanding to respect. So we will support and respect culture, da 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 da. Right. And I'm wondering if we just put a period after, what were you, Robin? Well, I, I actually think we need to have understand. Like, we, I think understanding is important here. If right. you don't strive to understand a, a culture that's different from yours, it's kind of, you know, that's kind of like the groundwork to appreciating and respecting, like that effort to understand it. Okay, I agree with that. So how about how about support? Okay, how about support, understanding, respect, and appreciation? of culture, socioeconomic status, language, ethnicity, ability, and other differences, period. Correct, that's right. Because I think that's what I was hearing too. I like that. Yes. Ms. Harvey, are you okay with that? I heard from Mr. Lusky and Ms. Lichter. Because I heard you talking about that qualifier. Right, that would remove that. Right, that, that would remove the qualifier. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I'm okay with that. So it's brief, but 
I believe it states, well, I don't want to speak for you all. But <laughs> <laughs> no, you can say, what is it? What are you? <laughs> well, I was going to say it's brief, but to me it's direct. Correct. And that's what I'm worried about is when we have too many words, we lose the, mm -hmm. the oomph of it. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So I think we're okay with that. I'll make the changes. Yeah. Um, okay. Before I move on to the next section, just want to do a time check. We are at uh, five o'clock. Uh, are we okay continuing with this um, particular agenda item? Um, I think we are getting near the end of this document, but I just wanted to um, confirm with committee members. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you. I'm okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right, so there at the bottom of the page, uh, we're just uh, removing, um, just removing there, replacing it with the students. Okay, we're okay with that? Yes. Okay, uh, we'll go on to C. Um, and C, um, Ms. Harvey, uh, since you are here with us today, I just want to um, remind um, Ms. Harvey and others. So this is actually a recommendation from Ms. Harvey. So if you look at what's um, in capital letters and highlighted, Ms. Harvey, that was some of the additional language um, based on one of your recommendations. Um, so I'll let you all review that and provide feedback. So I think that the, the it should say social, emotional, comma, psychological, comma, mm -hmm. and material support. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And I think, I think that was the that's... same issue from earlier. Okay. I'll take care of that. Okay. Anything else on this item? No, I'm okay. Okay. Right. I think just want to point out if you look at what's in brackets, um, the way it stands now when it goes to PRC, uh, the items in brackets would be um, so like bracketed G and L. Those would actually be removed from um, from the policy. Excuse me, this is Mr. Lusky. Sorry, I was looking up um, a possible replacement word um, for um, or was it? Um, give each and regardless of education, the requisite. So maybe like necessary or required. Again, I'm just trying to think of as how to make the document more reader friendly. Okay, as a replacement for a requisite? Um, correct. I mean, I'm okay either way, but. I don't have objections to change the word if we think it'll be more user friendly. I'm fine too. Okay, gotcha. I'll make that change. Do you have a preference between required or necessary? No, I, I looked it up on the dictionary and those were two possibilities. Sorry for the delay. Okay, no problem. I'll go with uh, required then if there's no preference from the committee. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Mr. Corns, if we can scroll to I guess we're looking at yep, next highlighted section. So um, here we have um, some additions recommended to um, item. What you see there is item um, item I. So, Mr. Handy, I have, I mean, I know we're not at the end, but I would like for the committee to keep in mind that we added some definitions. And my assumption is that 
those definitions are somewhere else in this document, but I shouldn't. Should I assume that? <laughs> like we uh, added uh, cultural competence as a definition. Correct. So the recommendation was to add that as a definition to the policy document. Correct. Right. But usually when you're defining something, it's because you see it somewhere else in the policy. So I will say that I hear you. Um, that hasn't been the case for policy 0100, and I know of a few other policies where that's not the case. I, I'm with you, though. I understand. <laughs> I'm with you on that. OK, but, so but just to I, know there's, there's precedent for that not being the case with some of our board policies. OK, so I, I would recommend that I is a good place to add um, maybe cultural competence. I don't know as a definition, I mean, as part of the language. Review existing okay. policies for. The promotion of educational equity and cultural competence. I'm not sure. Um, board members, can you weigh in? I just, I don't think we should have definitions if we're not referring to not them referring to it in the policy. Right, it doesn't make sense. Like, why would you re-need the definition if it's never mentioned? So I think sometimes we're redefining it in some, without saying it. Um. And, and Mr. Handy, can you provide us with some technical assistance here with regard to the language um, promotion of educational equity? I'm not sure promotion is a, we're looking for the presence of educational equity. I'm not sure promotion is uh, quite hitting the target there. We're mm -hmm. reviewing policies really to ensure that educational equity is infused in those policies that would then translate to a rule. So um, promotion is is not a strong enough word for me. Mm, understood. Um, I, I do like uh, presence. As opposed to promotion. I agree. And I'll um, I'll quickly, this is Ms. Stolesky, I'll quickly chime in on your last point. I agree with both you and Ms. Lichter that the definition should be logically with the part of the policy that uses that definition. I don't see, and maybe I'm missing something, I don't see cultural competence in this section, but if, if we're adding it for sure, I think having the definition is useful. Okay. Okay, so I'll make those changes. I'll add, we're going to change um, promotion to presence um, and then add cultural competence um, as Ms. Harvey stated. So that'll be part of that statement as well. So, Mr. Handy, there's going to be a rule to go with this policy, correct? Correct. I'm just worried sometimes we are saying the what no we're doing what the how it should be done like and revise no, we're doing this. the what right right we're doing the what right but right okay right so your role is the right the what and the why and then the rule would be the how right so along those lines that was one rationale for uh one of the committee members did recommend Right, keeping policies and removing the programs, professional development and procedures. Right. right. Correct, because to me that's starting to sound like more operational, but. Um... Right, so Ms. Lichter, as it stands now, if you all agree with this recommendation, all of what we talked about would apply to policy, right? So it would right. apply to your purview as a board, right? But it wouldn't get into the operations of programs. Okay, because it's not, it's not um, capital. Okay, but it was highlighted, gotcha. I got confused there for a minute. Right, no problem. Yeah, so the brackets indicates. Um, I try to highlight 
I guess any changes, if you will, right? right. So exactly. No, it's fine. That was my mistake. Yeah, exactly. The revise is required in, uh, in order to continue. Well, I skipped to number J. Sorry. <laughs> That's OK. Um, we can was J is split. So oh, does anyone need to? Are we all OK moving to J? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, good. OK. So Mr. Coins, if you can scroll up a little bit, I don't know if we can capture both parts of J. <laughs> so this is all the rest of it's all newly added, not revised, correct? Correct, correct. Uh, Mr. Handy. Yes. Can you please just read for us again the uh, opening sentence that precedes all of these points so that we can continue to consider it in context to that? Yes. So it reads now, um, in order to raise educational equity and excellence and to ensure access to rigorous educational opportunities that close achievement gaps, among all student groups, the school system will, and then colon. So can you explain? It says. How do you eliminate the predictability? Right. I, I was thinking, why wouldn't we just say eliminate the disproportionate over representation of? I was okay. thinking the same thing as yeah. well. Okay. I don't think we can eliminate predict. It's a, yeah. OK, got you. So we'll remove um, eliminate the right predictability of will. Gotcha. OK, so we'll remove that. Understood. Yep. OK. And then at the end, um, it looks like this might be a statement, not uh, something that we will do or the school system will do. It's, it reads, as data on academic achievement and other student outcomes are disaggregated and or analyzed, one sees high comparable performance for all identifiable groups of learners and achievement performance gaps are virtually non-existent. So it looks like the goal is to have the achievement gaps disappear, but I'm a little well, I think confused with that sentence. I Maybe. think that's an impact statement and right. probably should not be part of the policy. Right. right, where that white space is, I would stop it. I would delete what's after that little white space. OK, okay. Any, yeah, that makes any, sense. All right, any opposition to that recommendation? No. OK. Gotcha. We got that. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to the next section, please. Next statement. All right. All right. So now we have K. So, Mr. Handy, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but when you were reading it, did you feel some of this was re already stated in other commitments? Uh, I did. I did. Uh, thank you, Ms. Lecter. What I was trying to do is to stay true to my role as liaison and capture and compile recommendations um, as given by the committee. I, I will tell you, I try to group uh, similar statements and recommendations uh, for readability. So, um, and I will tell you, I, I did try to remove some redundancy. So I, I did, I did try to wordsmith it in a way so it would be readable. Uh, but I recognize that there may be some redundancy based on, you know, just the recommendations across the committee. Right, because the next one feels like, hey, to me, feels like we've said that. Um, however, this one's using the word culturally responsive, but. Uh, 
So Kay yeah. does seem like we've we've covered much of it in um, other other elements of the policy. Uh, I am though uh, the part that says each student will have unobstructed entrance and involvement in involvement in and full participation in excellent schools programs and activities within those schools. I'm not sure. Um, that seems to be saying something a little different, but I'm not sure if the is the board member who introduced this is here. They could speak to it. If not, I'm I'm not. Um, I mean, Mr. Handy, did you get the impression that this was speaking to uh, not having entrance entrance requirements for higher um, for other uh, academic programs like GT classes and um, uh, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, right. my brain is is falling blank there. I just I understand. Yes, right. Um, so I guess what I would ask, based on um, this question, Ms. Harvey, if we remove it, are, are we losing anything that you all want to include? I, I think. Right. My understanding is, is what you stated, Ms. Harvey, as to why it was recommended. Um, if we remove that, are we able to to move on without it? I, I believe the that K has been captured in other places. I, I agree. OK, I agree. So I just want to make sure I'm clear. Um, so we want to say all of K we will remove all of K. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think it's going to need another look, Mr. Handy, about the, the redundancy once we get through this. Okay. But I do agree K should be eliminated. That one just feels like we've said it a couple times. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Let's move on to um, L. And I'm saying a typo. It should be, it goes from L to N. But um, L and N, what you see is L and N are actually our last two. So why don't we look at L first? Lots of words. Lots of words. What are we trying to say? That we're. So Mr. Handy, I'm sorry. Can you read our introductory sentence again? Because I think this the language here is out of flow with that. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll do. Um... All right, so the introductory statement is in order to raise educational equity and excellence, and to ensure access to rigorous educational opportunities that close achievement gaps among all students, the school system will. OK, so we need a verb there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and I don't know if this is also a repetitive one. Um, this is Ms. Stileski. Maybe um, ensure equitable treatment. Um, I, I do like the section. Um, you know, free from threat, humiliation, danger. I mean, it may be able to be shortened, but I, I do like that. I can't remember if that's in another letter item. But this this does seem a little bit wordy in general as well. OK, so based on what you've shared so far, committee members, so um, I would say ensure equitable treatment will be evident. So we could just add ensure as Mr. Lusky recommended, and then the rest of the wording could remain. And maybe instead of will be evident, just is evident. Or ensure that equitable treatment exists. I don't know. I, and I'm putting you back on the spot, Mr. Handy, but what would you if I said to you, what's the gist of L? I know you this wasn't yours, but what do you when you read it, what do you think the gist? What's it trying to say? So, right, I think it is um, trying to ensure equitable treatment and then pointing out 
you know, um, I guess saying as a system, we um, do not allow threat, humiliation, danger, and disregard, and we're trying to have a supportive environment. So I think it's a statement around um, a safe and supportive environment is how I would summarize it. Safe, supportive, so, equitable environment, secure. I, I This is Mrs. Harvey. I actually think a lot, I know it's wordy, and we could probably cut down on some of the words, but I think we need to say um, that that the school system will maintain, or some word like that, a supportive um, environment characterized by characterized by acceptance, respect, safety, and security. Um, and then and then include that language about being free from threat, humiliation, danger, and disregard. I think it's important that we're identifying the way we want the environment to look and the things that are not acceptable in an equitable school environment. So I think it just needs to be words a little bit. Right. I. I agree, and I just drafted something, um, so I'll just read it. Um, so um, we will ensure equitable treatment by by maintaining an environment that is free from threat, humiliation, danger, and dis and dis uh, and dis and disregard. I don't know. Wait a minute. Ensure equitable treatment by maintaining an environment that is free from threat humiliation and danger Period. and then characterized by um, acceptance, respect, safety, and security. So I am not in agreement with getting rid of the word disregard. Okay. You know, so many of our students, while they may not be threatened or, you know, actively in danger, they are invisible in mm -hmm. their classrooms. And so disregard speaks to that. Um, and we want to make sure that none of our students are disregarded because that means they're not valued. I agree. As I was reading it out loud, I I avoided it because I wasn't sure if there was a better word to replace that. Um, but I do agree that that is an important element. So, Mr. Lusky, since you did draft something, or would you be able to just tweak your draft uh, based on what we just discussed and, and offer, offer a recommendation for this section? Sure. Do you want me to put something in the chat? Uh, sure, that would be great. Uh, well, I didn't know if you wanted to. Re yes, we could do that, and that way we could read it and then. OK. Okay, and while Mr. Lusky is working on that, we could preview in. In is actually the last item uh, for us to um, to discuss. That one feels a little redundant, too. Yeah, and I'm not sure who are we sharing. Who are we sharing our commitment and responsibility with? Um, the way I understood this, it's um, so coming from the board, I would understand it to be the board, uh, BCBS staff, BCBS stakeholders. It's how I understand it to be. But if it reads vaguely at this point, that's probably something to be addressed.
I think I did hear Ms. Lichter, you were recommended maybe removal. It, um, yeah, I'm not sure it's specific. And uh, um, I, I agree. I think this may be covered elsewhere. OK. So any, um, so I hear Ms. Lichter, Ms. Harvey, Ms. Tulesky, um recommendations to remove and so if there's no opposition, we can do that. And then also, I'm sorry, and then uh, we also have in the chat Ms. Tulesky's recommendation for letter uh, L. Okay. So I think we have N removed and then, um, okay, thank you, Ms. Tulesky. And then if we can review what's in the chat uh, for L. Can we switch it around and say, ensure equitable treatment of each student by creating a culture of acceptance, respect, safety, security and support free from that is free from threat humiliation danger or disregard i like that yeah because it's the positive first before the yep okay all right sounds like we're in agreement on that one thank you all uh and i believe that is um those are the recommendations so um, good timing. We're actually two minutes away from, I guess, our standard ending time of 530. Uh, Ms. Harvey, we do have the second part of the agenda. Uh, would recommend to you um, and the rest of the committee that we defer that to our next meeting. Uh, I, that works for me. Okay. Unless I'm there's objection. No, that. that works for me also. Um, I don't know what our deadline is to report back to. Um, it's June because I asked um, okay. Ms. Booker Dwyer that for the curriculum committee because we had to postpone it also. OK, great. And I am uh, on a short delay here, team, because I am moving through to pull my script back up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I apologize. Take your time. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> well, Ms. Harvey is doing that. Um, I will ensure that that agenda item is on our um, our May agenda, and um, so we can meet that deadline that you all have. If if we could have that as the first item on the agenda, that might be <laughs> that might be good there. Okay, duly noted. Yes. <laughs> And Ms. Harvey, I guess while you're um, returning to the script, I uh, just want to thank you all for your input here. Uh, I'm going to summarize. I'll be, I have my notes. I'll use the recording, everything to capture everything that you all have shared. Um, once I have that captured, um, I'll pass that on to uh, PRC. Remember, this will be the recommendations from this committee, and then um, PRC uh, will take the next steps on the policy from there. Uh, all right. But thank you all very much for for your input. Thank you, Mr. Handy, for facilitating this very important discussion. And so uh, as a reminder, the next committee meeting, we will discuss our uh, measures of effectiveness and committee purpose. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next equity committee meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May 16th, 2024 at 4pm. Uh, the next equity committee meeting with the Equity Council is scheduled for Thursday, May 30th, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Is there any other business? Hearing none, I'd like to thank everyone for all of your hard work and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank Good you. night, everyone.